Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are creating a 2D top-down space shooter called Space Escape using the Flame Engine. In the last video, I added the spaceship selection menu using which players can buy and equip different types of spaceships. And on pressing the start button, the correct spaceship is shown in the game world. All this is cool, but right now, this game does not end even when players run out of health. And in this video, I am going to fix that. I'll be adding a game over menu which will be displayed when player health becomes zero. So first, let's create a file under overlist directory called gameovermenu.dart. Now since game over menu will be very similar to pause menu, I'll just copy all the code from pause menu.dart into gameovermenu.dart. Next, let's quickly change the class name id string and constructor to game over menu. Now in the build method, title of this overlay will be game over instead of paused. And as this is a game over menu, it does not need the resume button. So I'll remove that. Rest of the two buttons will remain as they are. I'll just have to replace pause menu.id with game over menu.id in overlays.remove method of both these buttons. This completes the definition for game over menu. Now let's go to the gameplay widget and add game over menu to the overlay builder map. So I'll just duplicate the entry for pause menu and replace pause menu with game over menu. Now all we have to do is write the code to display this overlay in our game widget. So for this, let's go to the game.dart file. Here in the update method, after updating player score.txt and player health.txt, I'll check if player health is less than or equal to zero. If that is the case, first I'll pause the game engine. Then next we'll have to remove the pause button overlay. For that, I'll write this dot overlays dot remove pause button dot id. And after this, I can write overlays dot add game over menu dot id to display the game over menu. Now let's quickly build and test this. And as you saw, as soon as the health reduced to zero, the game over menu appeared. Now this is working as expected, but if I try to restart the game, you can see that the camera shake effect from last collision continues even after resetting the game. This does not look good. So to fix this, we can check if camera is shaking before pausing the game and going to game over menu. And this is very simple to do. In this player health check, I'll add one more condition which checks if camera is not shaking. This will make sure that even when player health is zero, we let the game run until camera shake effect ends. Now if I do a hot reload and try to bring player health to zero, you can see that the camera shake effect gets completed first and then we are presented with the game over menu. And now if I press restart, the shake effect does not overflow. Now that we have a working game over menu, let's see how to pause the game when users suddenly switch to another app or if they get a phone call in between. So to get notified about such changes in our game widget, all we have to do is override the lifecycle state change method. This method gets called by the flame engine whenever state of the app changes. And you can see that this method receives app lifecycle state as input. If you check the documentation of app lifecycle state, you'll find that it is just an enum with four possible values. Resumed, inactive, paused and detached. If you want, you can read these comments to understand what each state means. But in the context of our game, all the states except resumed are almost same for us. So in the lifecycle state change method, I'll add a switch statement which will switch over the input state. For the resumed state, we don't want to do anything. But for all the other three states, I'll just pause the game. Now at first look, this seems good enough. But consider a case where a player is already on the game over menu and switches to another app. In that case, we don't want to call pause again and display pause menu on top of game over menu. So to avoid that, I'll make sure that we pause the game engine only when player health is greater than zero. Now once the game gets paused, we can first remove the pause button overlay and then add pause menu overlay. Now let's save this code and do a hot restart. Here if I start the game and then suddenly press the home button, our game should go into pause state. And yes, when I switch back to the game, you can see that the game is paused and can be resumed normally. Also, when I am at game over menu and try to do the same thing again, we don't see the pause menu on top of game over menu. This means our code is working fine. 
Next, I'd like to add some code to increase players' money by the amount of score they make in game. So for that, let's go to the player class in player.dat file. Here, I'll first add a new field of type player data. I'll keep this a private field and since it will not be possible to initialize it inside the constructor, I'll mark it as late. Next, to initialize this field, let's go to the onMount method of this class. Here, after setting up the hitboxes, I'll get the current player data using provider.off method. To get the current context, I'll write gameref.buildContext. And as we don't want to listen to player data here, I'll set listen parameter to false. Now once we have the current player data, we can easily change the value of money inside it. And to keep the value of score and money in sync, I'll go to the add to score method of this class. Here after increasing the score, I'll also increase player data dot money. And that is it. Now let's save and do a hot reload of the game. So now if I try to destroy some enemies and increase my score, it should automatically update player data dot money too. So if I exit to main menu at a score of 9 and then go back to spaceship selection menu, you can see that the amount of money has increased to 9. This shows that our code is working correctly. And just to be extra sure, I'll start the game again and destroy some more enemies. Now if I exit the game at a score of 3, my balance amount should become 12. And yes, it is showing 12 here. Now before we end this video, I'll quickly go to the onload method in game.dat file and I'll remove this red button from joystick because I had added it just to show how powerful our command system is. It won't be available in the final game. So anyways, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.